Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. Okay, so now we're on to steps 40 and 41. Uh, you're gonna find these aluminum pieces here and there's two very similar ones. The, uh, the ones with the holes that are close together are for the front and the ones where they are further apart are for the rear. Uh, these basically plug into the rear swing arms back here like that. And they are going to be held in with two, uh, one screw, like so. This is a M4 by 18 and an M4 by 16 grub screw. So I've got all these parts laid out. I've also uh, got the shocks. You're going to want to find, uh, there's a bag that has, uh, these components here as well as uh, these little they basically serve as a washer um, they've got a little enclosure where the head of a, of a screw goes in so I'll just go ahead and plug one in to show you these are M3 by 25s there's gonna be four of those to go with the four of these Basically, it just kind of uh, is a glorified washer, and uh, those are going to go into the shock towers. Now, make sure you, uh, when you put those in, that you plug them into the uh, into the correct place uh, on the the right hole for the setup that you're using or emulating. So we need to take uh, these little ball joints here and. Uh, pop them in. Remember, one side is a little different than the other. It's a little easier to get in. And we just take a pair of pliers. And snap that in. And as long as I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and do all four of those right now so I have them ready for later. Yeah, confirm my position for my shocks. So, uh, you want to start by taking the shock mounting screws and these guys, they're threaded. So, this screws in here like that. So, you want to identify the hole that you want. And I'm going to get a wrench for that to make sure I've got that on tight. Simple crescent wrench will do for those. As you can see, I've already got a couple batteries in here. I was just uh, test fitting things and uh, getting ready to do my electronics. Uh, this is not a standard workbench. It's a, I mean, uh, the stand here. It's actually just a, uh, a yoga block. It's basically just a, a hard foam block. You can get those on uh, Amazon or Walmart. 
and they make for a nice work stand. Well, that's odd. This I'm not going to screw up the threads here, but that just was not threading on right. Let's try it from the other side. Okay, it's threading in fine from this direction. So what I'm going to do is there may be a problem with the threads at this end of the of the uh, of the item. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, thread that all the way through. So that's going to be a little hard to put on, but uh, now that I've uh, cleared the threads, I don't need to worry that it's going to cross thread and uh, damage itself. Okay, let's see, next step, I need to uh, screw these in place. It is odd that they give us a grub screw for one hole and a regular screw for another but um such as it is let's see if that's lined up yeah looks like it's lined up that's an e you can't really see in there so you might want to take your wrench and just kind of slide it into the arm and make sure that it's uh, that you don't have this off line. Uh, the grub screws, just FYI, um, the instructions call on those to be on the inner hole. Um, I don't see where it makes a difference one way or the other, but uh, it is a nice mounting system. I suppose if you, um, uh, it's better than having a hole in the middle of the arm. I wouldn't use an electric for this though. Um, because these holes are threaded and uh, if you are a little offline um, you could tear the piece up and you might lock your uh, your bolt in place and not be able to get it out so let's get going on uh, number two I gotta say, this really is a beautiful kit. Um, it's just really nice the way everything is put together. Uh, the the amount of anodized aluminum, the care with which everything seems to be made and engineered.
And just what I was talking about, I almost did. I almost cross-threaded this in. I actually started to, so I took it out and I ran the, uh, the screw in from the opposite side. And that's the nice thing that this is aluminum and that this is steel. Um, so it, uh, it makes that process of fixing those threads a lot easier. Just making sure I've got good movement there. Thought I had everything lined up. That's the, there's one thing I'm not thrilled with is I don't see why those need to be threaded in the first place, but such as it is, let's make sure we're got this lined up again. Okay, there we go. Did a little bit of oil, ran it through forwards and backwards. On this one, I'm going to test this grub screw and make sure that it threads in clean before I try doing it. Yep, yeah, that works just fine. Okay, a uh, little plastic barrel goes in the top of the shock. And that is really weird. I see what I did wrong. I put these little uh, things in facing the wrong direction. That's why they uh, have them as a separate part because the shock has to be so far, the bottom of the shock has to be so far outboard that it requires a separate arm. And it's obvious just looking at the directions there. Okay, I'm just going to quickly show you what's up. Okay. Um, this needs to be over here like that because the end of the shock is actually almost inside the rim of the tire. So that's why that needs to be there. And you also want to make sure that you've got... Uh... Yeah, see that has threads at both ends too. That's interesting. Okay. So, this one will end up on this side, the other one will end up over here. Just a quick switch. So, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video while I make it. Okay, I went ahead and uh, installed both of these. Um, as I said uh, a moment ago, I needed to switch these uh, from side to side. Um, and if you look here, you can see how far into the, uh, into the actual wheel space that uh, the end of the shot goes. 
Um, so that completely explains why they designed it with these uh, separate metal pieces. Um, so uh, all I had to do was uh, thread a bolt through here. Now, uh, when you do this, um, you should know that there are threads on both sides. So you don't have a larger hole here that the bolt passes through. And it, so there's no clamping action. You're basically just running th threads through here, threads through here. Um, it, ne it doesn't tighten in. All it does is tighten down. So uh, once you hit the, uh, the end, the head of the, of the nut or the head of the screw, you're done. Um, there's no, uh, there's no need to over tighten it or, uh, try to get anything out of that because since there's threads here and here, uh, that relationship is never going to change. So now it's time to do the front and the front is exactly the same. Um, I had these, uh, wheels on here because I was doing body fitment. So, you need to take the wheels off if you have put them on because you're not going to be able to get to those parts cleanly. Well, the fronts you can. They're set up differently, but it's still it's easier to see what you're doing if the wheels aren't on. So, just like on the rear, we're going to slide these pieces into position. And I would use a wrench to just kind of uh, make sure you're, you've got it in the right position. Thinner one probably works a little easier. Try something thinner, or am I just that far off target? There we go. So I'm going to start with the grub screw, and just like in the rear, the grub screws go on the inner hole. Make sure you know which hole you're going to be mounting your uh, the top shock mount to. And it looks like I got another one of these with a little bit of a thread issue. So I'm going to try doing this from the other side, like I did with the, the other one. And as you can see, it's going in really easy until I start getting to the far end. And I'm getting a little resistance. And now that I'm at the end, I'm actually going to need to put a wrench on it. just run it through a ways to uh, stretch the tight threads out. It's better than forcing it and uh, cross threading it because then you're just going to strip it.
Now, this is a lock nut. You don't have to tighten it down super tight. You're just, it's just a retainer. Um, so you're better off not tightening it down a little bit. Maybe even get it snug and then back it off a quarter turn because you want to make sure you keep movement up there. So there is our front suspension. And there is our front suspension, all done. Let's just uh, take a quick look here in our directions. That was 41 to 40, 41, 42, and 43. Okay, we've already done the bumpers. Front and rear, the diffusers, the body posts. And these are just exploded view diagrams with part numbers. So it looks like we are done with the exception of all the things that we have to do on our own. And when I say that, I mean things like uh, mounting and wiring up our ESC. They don't give you directions on that because they don't know uh, what type of ESC you're going to use. Um, I've uh, mentioned before, this is a McLan uh, ESC and motor combo. Um, I've never used McLan before. I've heard good things. 32-bit uh, processors in, in their uh, speed controls, um, good motors. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll I'll let you know what I think of it uh, down the road. Um, one of the things I liked right off the bat, aside from 32-bit, was that the um, there's no interface card required. Uh, you can has a USB plug and it comes with a standard USB cable. You can plug it right into a, uh, a PC or a, um, an Android machine, load up some software, and uh, you've got communication directly. No in-between box that you have to uh, purchase separately. So that is a huge bonus in my opinion right there. Um, I always hated buying a you know, a high-end ESC, and then it's like, oh, and if you want to be able to tune that ESC, you need to spend an extra $6,767. Sorry. You know, um, it's like, that. well, it doesn't do you much good if you can't tune it. So you, it's kind of a, you're forced into buying it, and that's frustrating. Um, I like that uh, they've actually built it into the device, and I think more companies should do that and hopefully will um because it's just you know a it's inconvenient to have to have some separate device uh to do the tuning and it's it's a, a money suck you know it's when you're already paying over 200 dollars for a high-end uh, speed controller having to spend another 60 or 70 dollars is a big chunk of money that you didn't necessarily figure into your budget So I am by no means done with the videos. I am going to 
uh, show you the uh, all the wiring I'm gonna the way I'm gonna set things up um, you know I'll go over some soldering uh, um, radio tuning um, I'll see if I can't show you some uh, pictures of the uh, software application I'll have to uh, think about that because there might be a legal issue with me uh, you know recording their software interface and then distributing images of it if it looks like it's going to be a problem I'll just uh, tell you about it and give you my review um, so uh, I got a comment from somebody who asked about center differential and uh, swapping off-road parts I hadn't heard anything about that previous so um, I may look into that and see if that's an option or if there's a uh, I, I didn't see any optional uh, center diff um, but uh, there's no reason that one couldn't go in there um, another I think even the same person also mentioned that some people were having an issue with the battery straps getting caught on the pinion here uh, now right now I've got my shorty packs set up for the rearward position um, if I move them forward uh, and you can do that for balancing purposes if you want to move the center of gravity further forward less weight on the rear um, you can move the shorty packs up to you can't move them to here but you can move this to here and then there's another locator for the rear one so basically you're moving both packs about an uh, inch and a half forward in that case I would say that the strap you would need to either shorten it or make sure you've got the uh, the loop here further rearward so that you can uh, have the tab you know pulled but not come over the edge here and another thing would be to reverse the course of it you know thread it through the opposite way so that this side um, is up at this end and uh, hopefully that would solve any issues um, but uh, personally I haven't heard of anything um, but he, he said he had heard something about that from some people and uh, was wondering if I had, had heard anything so um, bear that in mind if you decide to uh, if you're building this kit and you're gonna use the uh, standard size packs now I got what I thought were a standard size 2s packs and I was gonna go with the full-size packs and when I got my full-size packs they were too long and they were you know a reputable name brand I assumed it was just a standard size so if you are interested in going with the long packs instead of shorties make sure that they're gonna fit before you buy in I actually ordered them received them and I had gotten them through a main and I had sat on them for over a month and a main hobbies was really nice and took them back and swapped me out for uh, some of these packs and um, uh, you know even though it was past the 30 days by almost a week uh, they were very nice and didn't give me any problems about it and gave me the full refund and such um, I've been getting a lot of stuff through a main hobbies and uh, especially with the uh, the virus thing impacting everybody's uh, supply chains they are still managing to get stuff out quickly and uh, I've probably spent five or six thousand dollars with a main hobbies in the lat this year alone and I haven't had a, a single complaint um, there's been everything has arrived in good shape um, you know everything arrived in a timely manner I, I can't say one bad thing about them I got nothing but uh, praise and uh, they have good prices you know so um, thanks to a main hobbies kudos so um, that is the end of this video please click like please subscribe if you're watching my videos and you haven't subscribed yet please do so it it's a huge help um, it, uh, I need to get this 
grown to the point where I can monetize if I don't if I can't monetize by uh, you know like you know New Year's of this year or maybe spring I may have to slow down or stop altogether uh, because I can't afford to keep buying uh, you know kits and building stuff for you and not to mention it is a tremendous amount of work to produce all these videos so um, you know for any of the people that you're following you know if you like somebody's videos give them a like write some comments say thanks that's always nice I can't tell you uh, you know what a privilege it's been to get so many nice comments from so many people um, always you know makes it easier to get up and and uh, do another video and do some more filming it's a tremendous amount of work uh, to do it all by yourself and um, most people have no idea how much work is involved in in doing these uh, doing this type of uh, video production and uh, home environment so uh, anyway give give your youtubers some props because YouTube has been making it harder and harder for us to make a nickel doing this and um, at some point here, I may uh, I may put up a um, I may start asking for donations uh, because uh, ultimately this is going to grind to a halt at some point financially. Well, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out the rest of the videos that came before this if you haven't watched them. Um, anytime I do a large project like this I do a playlist for you which means all of the videos are set up to be watched one after another um, and you can go to the playlist instead of the individual videos and you can start and stop and start and stop at your will and just leave it open in a tab on one of your browsers and uh, you can watch all of the videos in in order